Urugu comes from uh, Dogon uh, mythology, a small group of African people um, whom Europeans would consider uh, probably uh, primitive, unquote, um, who have a most complex cosmology. And in it, they talk about Ama, the creator, having created all beings with twin souls, the male and female uh, part, and that represents the whole being. Uh, Urugu was a being that um, tore himself away from the process of gestation, the process of being born, so to speak, early, before Ama was finished creating it. Uh, because he wanted, in his arrogance, he wanted to compete with the Creator, with Ama, and create a, a better universe, a better, uh, an Earth actually, um, than Ama could create. Um, when he uh, came down from the heavens, came to, to begin the process of creation, he found that everything that he created was incomplete. That indeed he could not uh, create uh, 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 perfection or anything with life because he himself was incomplete. Mm -hmm. He then realized that he was missing a part of himself. So he goes back to Ama to get his female uh, part so that he could be whole. Ama had given that twin soul, that female part, away so that Urugu was in the state of uh, searching for this other part of himself that would make him whole and never being able to find it, so that he was forever incomplete, um, could only uh, uh, create uh, destruction, actually, could only destroy, mm -hmm. um, and could never be fulfilled. Um, that, to me, was a statement of what I saw in uh, the nature of European cultural thought and behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, why is this study important? Why did you undertake this study? Uh, there's a personal reason that the point that I was at when I began graduate studies, um, I saw us as African people always being put into a position when we would be in uh, European or white uh, uh, academic institutions of um, being used to study our communities so that they can then use the information to control us. And I said that I would not be put into that position and decided that, um, as I was being taught uh, European anthropology, I said, let me use some of this and see if I can turn it around and indeed study them and put them under the microscope. And that was the beginning of this process. I think the, the uh, ideological reason, the political reason, most definitely was that um, Europeans have been very good at masking their intentions and their posture towards uh, African people and other non-European people. And we have not understood um, what their, their uh, purposes are, their intent towards us, have not understood their behavior. And I felt that this kind of study could help to unmask mm -hmm. what in reality is the nature of, of Europeans. So Urugu, an African-centered critique of European cultural thought and behavior, is about what? It's about how um, European culture works as a, a consistent machine for the achievement of European power and total control of the universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. Let some people think that this study is just for, or book is just for intellectuals and not just, and not for the working man and woman. Could you tell us some ways that um, European uh, cultural thought and behavior have us working against ourselves? 
One of the things um, that they do, I think, that is that is very damaging is the way in which they, um, uh, how shall I put it, train our children in schools to act against themselves and their mm-hmm. people, to deny the aspects of themselves that really indeed are their strengths. We, of course, have experienced that have been conditioned in this way, and it affects every single one of us. Uh, the, what you call the working um, Africans mm-hmm. um, may be in a better position to begin to understand the kinds of things that I'm pointing to. It is the people who have been um, so indoctrinated within the academies mm-hmm. that, ha- that, that find it more d- difficult to to critique to why critically um because the academy since the time of uh, of plato um back in um 600 700 500 actually uh, years before the common era um the academy is the place that has been used to um despiritualize the universe mm-hmm. has been used to um to promote a conception of truth that has no spirit in it. And we as an African people are a spiritual people. So that what it does is these institutions do is to take us away from ourselves. So the the more time you spend in them, the 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 more you are convinced that uh, of this European reality which is not a real reality. It's not a reality for African people. You make this statement in your introduction. This study was not approached objectively. It is not possible to be objective towards Europe. Explain that. The concept of objectivity itself is something that has been used um, by Europeans um, to control African people. Uh, It is a concept which says that um, we can contemplate truth without being connected to any culture, without being, uh, without coming from any perspective, without having any uh, political implications in what we do. That, of course, is not the case. And what we did was to accept this and say that, oh, they're scientists, they're scholars and so forth, were describing us objectively. What they were doing was promoting a uh, particular way of viewing the world, promoting a particular political interest in the world. I do not make that claim because that claim, it would be a lie. Mm-hmm. And it is always a lie mm-hmm. when, um, you know, you open up a book and somebody says, well, I'm being objective in, in doing this. Um, how can you be objective? You, you are a human being. You're part of a culture. Your people have been, have had an historical relationship to other people. Um, for any African person to say that they are being objective about uh, uh, Europe would be to say that they were being apolitical non-political we need to get away from that so this is a very political work it is meant to be if you told black people that white people were committing biological genocide against us and that by the year 2000 whatever there would be no more black people you would get one reaction but you're saying that we are being threatened with cultural and psychological extinction. How do you get African people to see the urgency of the situation? Um, I don't know, frankly, if you can. I think that we have to focus on young people, young African people who have not been so um, um, conditioned um, with a way of of thinking uh, that supports European imperialism, European power, that they still have the ability to use their, their, their intuition, their spirituality, their Africanness to create. Mm -hmm. to think beyond the limitations that have been given to them in European academies. I think most of of us as as adults, um, as elders, 
um, have been so conditioned that we're we're afraid mm -hmm. to move beyond the parameters that have been defined by our enemies mm -hmm. in our thinking, so that our um, our, our vision is limited. Um, and so we are really not the people who should be um, conceptualizing the, the, uh, 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 the plans, you know, the movements, what we should be building. But uh, I focus on the younger people who hopefully are still more in touch with what is natural to African people. And if I can affirm that in them, they will see the urgency. I find that in my teaching. I find that in, in teaching young people that once they are affirmed and, and introduced in a conscious way to the African worldview, it becomes crystal clear to them. And they see in an urgency in us as African people building for self as opposed to imitating forms which have been put in place to make sure that we continue to be oppressed. Culturally and psychologically, do you think we realize what we have lost? No, not, um, you know, it's so, it's, it's, uh, it's ironic because we don't realize it on a conscious level, mm -hmm. yet we live it every day um, in the way we um, walk in the way we talk, in the way, in, in the music we, we create. Um, there is a, a depth of spirituality which in, exists in us as a people, um, which has continued since, um, since our origins, that our ancestors have passed to us, and which we, we, we continue um, to pass on ourselves. That we don't consciously recognize as a strength we don't realize that it is something that we need to use to think with um, so that when we are presented with a european worldview in the classroom mm -hmm. we think that that's the only way to be that's the only way to think because we didn't come with anything so I don't think that, that we are aware on a conscious level of what it is that we've moved away from in terms of power. Mm -hmm. You see, that's what we're not aware of. Could you talk some about how we came to be who and what we are today? Um, uh, if you okay. understand the question. I think I do. Okay. I think that we have to look back at a period that I call the Ma'afa. Mm -hmm. um, we as Africans were very consciously stripped of our culture. Now that becomes a platitude. You know everybody's saying that. Uh, stripped of our culture, but we have to see that we had a strong culture and so forth. But nobody seems to realize the depth of what that means. Being stripped of our culture meant being conditioned to accept ourselves as inferior beings, okay? It meant that we were conditioned um, to feel that we had to be dependent on Europeans, dependent on white people, that we could not do things for ourselves and in our own image. That conditioning began with a period, a long period of terrorism, which was very physical, you know, physically manifested. At the same time, there was the breaking of the will. So there was uh, cultural violence, I call it, you know, in the book, as well as the physical violence, which was very important. We then came to a period in which we mistakenly thought we were free. We're now at a point where um, we think that we have uh, freedom, the ability to be whatever it is that we can be within the society and so forth. Yet what happens is that we are still 
thinking within a modality that has been determined by those who would oppress us, those who would control us. And we don't see beyond that. So the question for me becomes, um, who controls how you think? We have the, the ability to, to create our own structures, our own theories, our own definitions of reality. Um, to look at the African worldview, to look at, for instance, uh, the Dogon people, to look at the Kemetic people, to look at our, our own people who have, even look at Carter G. Woodson, for instance, the miseducation of the Negro, which I don't think was really ever understood by us, and to use these things as inspirations for the building of institutions, the creation of things, the, the, the building our own buildings. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like we've been conditioned so well through such a long process that now it is us who are enslaving ourselves mentally. Because the job has already been... The job has been done. It would be so easy, in one sense, for us to undo it. That's what I'm saying in this book. Because the way the system of European control works is that you have to accept a concept of reality which makes them superior. If you deny that, their thing will not work. And they will lose their control. So that they put all of this energy into establishing these, the system that begins when you're three, four, and so forth, which defines reality in such a way where there's no spirit, because they aren't a spiritual people, you see, um, which talks about this, this objective truth and so forth, which says that um, African spirituality represents backwardness, so you need to move away from it. It does all of these things which make you as an African person, me as an African person, us distrust the very part of ourselves which is our strength. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm going to get back to this question, and that is this whole question of do we know what we have lost? Uh, do we realize that we have not always been Democrats, have not always been um, <laughs> Baptists have not always been black Greeks, have not always been links, have not always, um, can we, con how do we conceive of, uh, of ourselves in a different time? I think that there is a lot that is being done um, within the movement uh, of African-centered education mm -hmm. um, in that regard in terms of, I think we have more information now that, that we've ever had before. Um, and I have seen the effect of that information. That is very important that people do begin to realize and understand, first of all, how young Europe is in relationship to Africa and what we were putting into place creating, building, conceiving of uh, long before Europe existed. Um, when you open people's minds to that, it can have a lot of power. Mm -hmm. So that I think that generally we have not understood that, but we have an opportunity to do so because of the work of, of uh, many people now. Um, that is building on work that was done before that, that we didn't know about. Mm -hmm. 